What's going on guys? Um, today we're gonna be uh, messing with some path animations. Uh, kind to, We're gonna kind of make um, a little vehicle that I made move around. So let, let's see what we can do. Let's, let's go over to the blender side of it. All right, so last week I made a blender a uh, bomb car, elite bomb car, uh, because as you know, my character, my beast holds a bomb. So I thought, hey, you know what? Let me make a little vehicle out of it. <laughs> so this is the vehicle I made. And this is like the little cool bomb car that I made. Um, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple of things where we're gonna make this little bomb car go around in circles, uh, just to on a path itself. Um, and then I'm gonna show you what you can do with a path as far as maybe getting him to jump over some bands or something. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it. So right now um, I have my character, I set him up and everything is pretty much separated right now like you would normally see. So if I move the bomb, like the bomb's gonna move, you know, stuff like that. But what we wanna do is make it where the, the bomb moves all together. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna introduce you guys to what I call, well, not what I call, what Blender calls uh, the empty. So you're gonna, you're gonna press shift and then A, and it's gonna pull off, it's gonna pull, um, it's gonna open up the little menu that you see here and you're gonna scroll all the way down where it says empty and you're gonna pick cube. The reason why I pick cube is I just like being able to like, it's it's a big cube for one thing and then you, whenever you press it, like it's it's a good uh, setup to start since it's, it's really a big cube. So from here, what you would do is you're gonna highlight all pretty much everything so you're gonna just right click I mean you're gonna left click and then use the little dotted marquee that you get and then you're gonna let it go and it's gonna pretty much select everything the reason why I don't press a is because if you have a camera or any lights or anything else what it's gonna do is gonna pretty much pick up all that so we're just gonna select it ourselves so now that you have everything selected you're gonna press Control P and then this menu is gonna come up. What it pretty much what you're gonna do is you're gonna say that the cube is gonna be the parent to all the, the meshes that are, you know, that are the, the vehicle itself. So what I pick is object and keep transform. So again, you're gonna select everything and you're gonna press control P and then you're gonna press object, object, keep transform. So what you're gonna see is like a little dashed line here. And when you select the cube, it's gonna, when you move the cube around now, you're gonna move the full vehicle now. So everything everything that's separated in here is, is gonna be following the cube itself. So it's pretty much like you're, you're gonna be, um, you're, you're layering what you want for it to, to control. So by doing this too, when you animate, let's say I'm gonna move this from this particular spot all the way over here, and that animation is just this is gonna keep going. From there, it gives you the ability to go in here and start animating your character itself. Um, so here you can go into pose mode and like start you know messing with his head and like start keyframing like the little things here and there. And that animation is going to be separate from what you animate with the, the cube itself. So that's the really cool thing about uh, an empty itself, because what you can also do, too, is let's say you want the wheels to move uh, around in circles. There's a there's quite a few ways to get this set up. But uh, what I usually do is I'll create like another empty um, and then just make this tire uh, pretty much just rotate Oop, wrong way, like rotate. And so you can get the animation of the tire as it flows, but that's a little bit down the line. We'll, we'll start breaking the, that type of stuff down. So today, like I said, we're going to start learning how to animate on a path. So now that you got your bomb car going or whatever you want, you can even have a beast, like an infinite walk going and you can uh, pretty much attach a cube to the infinite walk and you can start, you know, kind of showing it where to go. So, 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start setting up the path that I wanted to animate on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click uh, Shift A, and then we're gonna pick up uh, where it shows curve. And what I like to do for now, what, what we can do now, we'll just do the circle curve just to get it started. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna get like a circle in the middle. And what I like, um, what I like to do is scale this a, a little bit bigger. So you can either go up here where it says scale and click that and then you'll get this option or um, the, the cool little uh, keyboard shortcut is S. So when you select the little circle, you press S and then you get these that little black arrow right there. When you move your mouse to the left, it starts expanding. And if you go right, it starts shrinking, right? So let's go ahead and expand this a bit out. And so now we're here. What we want to do is, uh, let me see. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much that, that's where that's at. So now this is like the cool little spot where you're going to attach your cube to the path itself. So what's going to happen is when you do that, it's going to start going around this path and it's gonna like it's driving around in circles. So what you do for that, you're going to click the cube, which pretty much, like I said, the cube is going to be the one uh, that's going to mani manipulate like the, everything. So you click the cube, you're going to go to right here on this option that says object constraint properties and you're going to click the little uh, drop down menu and you're going to pick follow path so this option pops out when the follow path is enabled so what what i do is you're going to head and select a target and the target is going to be your your circle that you made which is the noob circle uh, let me just triple check that I am correct. Oh, sorry. It's going to be the Ben, the Benzier circle. So you're going to click this and it's going to be the Benzier circle. You can either click it. Uh, as you can see, I've been practicing a lot, so <laughs> I have a whole bunch of them. Um, so we're going to click that and right away it kind of moved, right? It, it moved to toward where the, the path is. So from there, you're going to select animate path. You're going to press it and that animates it. So right now, it's look how it starts moving around the path now. So it's going around the circles, but as you can see, it's kind of off-centered, right? And it's not really on the path. And that's where you start kind of toggling these little options uh, right here. So what I do is I usually click follow curve and I am gonna, let's see, where is it? Is it X? Okay, so this is fine. This is fine. Where are we? Gotta get them flipped over. This is the fun part of this thing is trying to get the correct. Okay, this is like the correct uh, setup right now. So what I have it here is minus Y and Z. And here it's, it's, it is gonna, you know, be a little, like a little toggle session because you do have to find the correct position. But as you can see here, there's a little blue dash line. And what's happening is that this little vehicle is like trying to follow it, but that's not really on the path itself. So all you have to do is click the cube and start like kind of dragging it where it's gonna match the certain area that you need it to be on. So now I have it there. So when I play it, it's going around the circle itself. Um, so he's just cruising around, as you can see, such speed, such grace. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, but here, like I said, it's the cool thing because since he's connected to the cube now, you can actually press the cube and hit the S button, which is the scale button. And you can make this like, you know, the vehicle pretty big, you can like shrink it down and it won't mess up really the 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 curve of it but as you see when you shrink it down you'll see those little uh, blue dashes again um right here and then here when that when that happens like i said you just get it and like kind of drag it where it's hitting it and now you have like a small little car like racing around a circle um and then let's say oh you know what i, I didn't want to go to that direction i wanted to go the other way well all you got to do is click the circle and you go up here where it says object 
Oh, no, sorry. You, you press the circle, you press tab to go into edit mode. And you're gonna see here where it says segments and then it says switch directions. So you click that and now he's gonna go the opposite way. Um, so now he's cruising at lightning speed, getting his driving to where the beast X's are. Um, so, okay, so here, the cool thing about animating on, on a path is that you can start manipulating the path area itself. So let's say you have this guy going in circles, right? Well, if you press tab, you're gonna see these cool little adjusters. Um, what do I have that? Hold on. You see these little cool little adjusters here. Well, what you can do is actually manipulate like the pathway. So right now, let's say he's going around in circles, but now I want him to go up right here and I'm gonna make him like go down a bit, like, kind of like a roller coaster. And then he's gonna follow that. So now that I press play, he's gonna start going up and he's gonna go around all on this like one little path. So the cool thing about that is that when you um, set up sections for him to drive around like a little race, racing track or something like that, like he'll follow around the path. And what you could do with this path itself, you could start, we'll get into this later, but you can start actually manipulating this path to make it into like a real pathway and make it into a road or, or what have you. Um, so right now that that's one path you can do and it's a circle. Like I said, you can manipulate it um, as much as you need to be uh, as you want. So you can make this guy go really high and you press play and then like they'll follow it up. So Panda, really quick, we do have a question. Yeah, what's this what's up um well i got you here someone's asking how do you build tension from the floor to the car tension what do you what do you mean uh you know what uh demo if you want um yeah you can break it down or you can also uh raise your hand and we can bring you on stage I'll yeah you can, you, you can chat demo if you want to chat or if you yeah, yeah exactly so just request and we'll pull you up um so he's saying like mm -hmm. would you make it weighted um i believe you can weight it um i haven't really messed with something that it needed to be weighted but I, I see what you mean um i think there's ways to actually weight down the <laughs> i like stoke right um you can weigh down the character itself or the cube itself <laughs> and so let's say if you're trying to do something that is has to be stuck to a floor i'm thinking that's what it is um you can actually make it where it goes with the path and it, it'll be as heavy as it is but i haven't messed with that yet i can look into it and get back to you demo um i think that would work a little bit better if i just go ahead and try to mess with it myself or we could jump on a call and then you know try to mess with it together i don't mind um doing a tutorial with you or helping you out or us just you know swapping ideas together um, I think yeah, that was a really good question, by the way. Though. Yeah, very good question. So, so right now, this is like I said, this is a circle one, of course. That, that one's dope. So let's go ahead and delete this. And now I'm gonna bring. I, I made like a little ramp. <laughs> so this is my little ramp that he's gonna jump across. So I, I made this little thing real quick. Um, so the beast is gonna have a little flight test. Um, so here, if you don't want to animate with a circle in general there's also another path that you can use which is called um you're gonna go to curb and it's just gonna be path by itself so when you click path by itself it pretty much makes a straight line that you can start manipulating any way that you need to so let's say here since the the track is going to the left side i'm gonna i'm gonna turn this wheel on the z-axis so now it's going parallel i'm gonna press tab and i'm gonna start then you can start actually manipulating the different points together so let's say uh, i want this beast to jump over this cool little setup that i did i'm gonna make sure that the path is following it so i'm gonna drag the path all the way to where it hits the ramp and then i'm gonna press e which makes a new point and I'm going to drag it so it can like start going up the path. It's right here. And then this one, I got to manipulate it a little bit down. So 
Oh wait, let me do it a little bit differently. Okay, so E, we're gonna go up. We're gonna do it in increments so it won't get too crazy. Um, so keep pressing E, E is the button that is called the extrude button and that's gonna make the, the path, like the path start extruding. As you can see, I'm not doing it straight. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these guys and bring them back. Oh man, I have to do it separate. There we go. It's gonna be a little crooked drive. <laughs> Hopefully he'll make it across. Um, right here, right here. And then, so we're gonna go back to this dot, press E to extrude, and then we're gonna go maybe right in the middle so we can do a little curve up here and then press E again, and then it's gonna go down a little bit more. And then E to extrude, and we'll fix this right now. Let me just get it to go off the track. And then look at how far I went. I went the wrong way. So let's go back. <laughs> and then so you turn, man. There you go. <laughs> yeah, these little when you do it like this, like it's better to. Um, wait, let me. <laughs> I'm going the wrong way. Totally. What am I doing? Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's move this this way. And now he's like, okay, let me go back. Um, I'm backspacing guys, cause I went the wrong way. <laughs> All right, here we go. So here, E. And now we're going straight down. Well, you know what I mean? We're gonna manipulate it as much as we can right now. Oh, that's gonna be crazy. All right, let me go back. Pick this one up. There we go. When you start manipulating yourself, or you start doing like cool things like this, like you gotta have fun adjusting it too, because there's a way to actually keep it on the path. But I mean, just a quick little tutorial to have fun. All right, so now that this is kind of set. We're gonna get this little guy on the path. So we're gonna press tab again to get out of that edit mode. We're gonna click the square again. We're gonna go to where it says follow path. Um, if it's not there, you're gonna go into object constraint properties and then you go into where it says follow path. And then here you're gonna cut, which, what is this one called? The, no, the NURBS path. So we're gonna click the NURBS path, zero, zero, 001. So now, attached to it and we got to hit animate path follow curve and now we got to change the direction on it hold on real quick where are you going bro well since he wants to jump that way let's let him jump that way right <laughs> All right, let's turn this guy around then. So here we're gonna go to minus Z. And now, now he's gonna jump the curb. So he jumps over <laughs> and he keeps on going, watch. Where are you going? Uh, <laughs> so that's pretty much how you animate on a path. Um, and then, so you'll get him and he'll fly down. And the cool thing about it, let's say you have multiple little guys, right? You can actually, if you have different animate, uh, different vehicles, let's say, or different uh, characters, you can actually have them all animated on that one path. So whatever this path is, like you can have multiple things like going, and then you can just start like adjusting the speed on it and stuff like that, um, which we can get to at a later time. Uh, since I'm running out of time probably and then yeah so the cool thing about this is that how I said about the empty how it's attached to it right which you can what we can actually do is get the camera where is he over here and this will give me let me just rotate it around real quick um, maybe I need a 90. and then this the camera itself could actually be a attached to the cube as well 
So now the camera is attached to it and it's following it. So when you kick the ca the camera view, he's upside down, right? Because I did it wrong. But um, let me turn <laughs> that camera around real quick. And then that would help a lot. Let's see. Let's go negative 90 and then we're going to rotate it. Oops, not zero. Oh, there it is. 90. Now let's go 180. There you go. Now that the... Now... Is zooming in on him so now when he goes like the camera's like following the path to well following the cube which is following the path and then everything's just following together so but yeah that's pretty much how you animate on a path real quick and i hope you guys enjoy this little tutorial i hope it helps you on something i can't wait to see what you guys can do i am actually gonna fine tune this little vehicle to you get for you guys if you want to use it yourself it'll be available and you can throw your, you can throw your beast in it um and i'm just gonna fine tune it I had some ideas from red maybe to add like a little back door in the back or or something a little uh b what is it estrado's a uh, little air freshener maybe hanging from the front like you know something cool but yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much that's pretty much it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So I had a couple questions, man. Yeah. Um, like with the so talking about like the this looks really good by the way. Um, talking about the settings, right? Like when you go and render something like this, like mm -hmm. what are the I guess for you guys, like what's the best preferred like um, settings to have when rendering, and how long does this really take you guys to render? At least for yourself, Emma. Uh, for myself, what I do is I, I'll usually, it depends on what I work in. Uh, so if it's, I usually use Eevee um, because I just like the way it looks with the, with the colors and because you can mess with the colors with the bloom effect. And I, I really like that. And what the bloom effect does, I'll show you real quick. Um, cursor to select it. It gives you... Let me turn on a light right here. So you see how like this light is kind of like shining on them. Well, with bloom effect turned on, you can like make the in intensity of the lights, you know, crazy. I mean, you could do it in in cycles too, but you need to add it with nodes and all that. But with with um, with Eevee, it, you just could ma manipulate the lights like really quick, and that's why I like using Eevee. It's just like my style. But anyway, so when I when I go ahead and uh, render a scene, I'll go into um, let me see here. Let me change this out real quick. Um, so for what I do with Eevee, since it, it renders pretty quick when I do it like this, but I'll I'll keep it in the MPEG video mode. So MPEG MPEG video mode, and then I'll change the. Um, the video Kodak, and right now I have it set at H.264, or you can change it into MP, MPEG-4. So right now I have it at H.264, and I keep it medium quality, I do it good, and it usually pumps it out pretty, pretty quickly. Um, but with Cycles, because Cycles is really heavy with, of course it makes it look realistic, so that's why it takes up a lot of RAM, it takes a lot of graphic, uh, CPU processing, GPU processing, so it really depends on your setup. But let's say your computer can't really handle the the really um, the hardcore like quality of, uh, of the cycles, change it to Eevee because Eevee's actually was made for, for computers that can't really like handle or don't really have that much uh, 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 like a beast computer. So like Mac, for example. Yeah, I would say with <laughs> Mac, like with like the Mac books and if you're having troubles and it sounds like a, a fire jet or something like a real an F16, like change it to Eevee and mess around with those settings. I mean, you won't get the, the high quality, but at least you can get some animations going. And then this will... The, so, then, basically with, so basically with Eevee, it's like lower quality, but it's quicker. Yeah. And with Lycos, it's better quality, but it's going to take longer. Exactly. And for the question, Red... red Red, I'm just gonna call you Red. Um, it's right here. You're gonna go into where it says render properties, and the render engine is right here. Eevee. So Eevee's good. And then what you can do too is when you're, if you, let's say you have a uh, a good computer, but you're noticing that your graphics cards, like for some reason, it's not kicking in. 
there, make sure that your preferences that you have, you're not going to see it here because of, since my screen is kind of pointed on it, but if you go into preferences and you go into system, you can actually toggle your graphics card to turn on because the default it's not, uh, because it, it wants you to pick it. So make sure that you go to what I use is CUDA or C U D A. And then you can pick your, uh, I'll put it in the pictures right now. Uh, I mean, in the chat right now, so you guys can see the setting on it, but make sure that you have that toggled on if you want to utilize your GPU. And then um, what else? So here, when, when I have that setting set up, I go into render and I'll go into like render animation. It'll just start working and uh, you know, it should be pretty good. And it also works with rendered image. You don't have to really change it up towards a PNG unless you're doing like a sequence. Because what I've noticed some people, which is fine, you can also do a sequence of animation where it just takes different pictures and then you can compile it. And that works fine too, if you wanna grow that route as well. Like I said, I haven't got into a crazy um, uh, render where I needed to use that, but that's an option. So, but yeah, to answer that question. What about you, Red? All right. Thanks, Red. <laughs> <laughs> I think Red uses cycles. And the last time he did his render for that museum scene, it took him a while for it to actually work, but it looks really nice. So I guess the the hours are worth it if you want that detail in it, like really clean. But with mine, as you see my animations that come out, they're usually they look a little more cartoony in it. They 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 look really colorful because I use EV and I don't really go that much to the nodes yet with cycles unless I'm gonna get into that, then I'll learn it. But right now I'm just I just have fun with EV and I just work with what I what I have. It's actually really good to know though too, because I, I usually do cycles, but um, I see them on the chat too. He's like, my M1 Mac is crying right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> MacBooks are so, oh my God, mine sounds like a helicopter. Yeah, it gets crazy. It, Wild. It, yeah, it just like, like it is like that whole sound. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, is it going to blow up? Like, <laughs> so bad. It's but, so bad. Oh, oh God. Red wants to come. Oh, yeah. Okay. You guys hear me? Yeah. Now we can. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, so I just have Discord issues. Hey, is Red talking right like, now? Or? Oh, for, um, don't do that anymore because now I have issues. Um, <laughs> is Red talking right now, Ben? Yeah. I think so. I'm gonna mute Yashi here in two seconds. You watch. <laughs> um, so, so when you were going over the um the, the preferences systems and CUDA, do you have the GPU and the like? No, um, I just have the GPU. I don't. If I'm running one, I don't put them both on because it's just like overkill. So but that would speed it up though, right? I honestly, I, I don't know if it would. Um, so just leave it as only GPU. Yeah, because there's some times where I'm running different programs too at the same time. So like I'll have the the render going, but uh, but I have like Photoshop up or something so I can like at least use the CPU for something else. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like divvying up the space you have on your computer, you know? But maybe if you have them both on, maybe it's like, supreme super cycles all the way but uh, i'm not sure i haven't messed with it gotcha and did you want to show people the um the, the cool trick about having multiple views at once the uh the spleen uh, the screen splitter when you're doing animations oh yeah usually what i'll do is when i do auto animations i'll have if you scroll up to the the little corners of the screen it could be the left or the right when you see that little crosshair there, you can just click the left click and you pull it down and it'll open up like a new screen. So what I usually do is when I'm working with the camera, I'll have the camera set up on one side. So here, this will be like my working area. So when I manipulate the camera, I'll know what it looks like because right away I'm seeing it like at, on real time, seeing how the camera looks. Um, so that's like a good way of, of setting it up. But let, let's say, um, so here, like, oh, I moved it, but I want to see what it looks like. Well, if you have that second screen open, like, you already know what it's going to look like. So, um, but let's say here, right, you see how the cube is kind of stuck to the, um, I have four, four minutes, so let's see. So you see how the cube is, like, stuck to the path, right? 
But now what I can do, I I can go into, oh, that's another option. I mean, that's another tidbit, guys. If you're working on something and you notice that when you're zooming in, it starts slowing down and you're trying to like manipulate it to like, oh man, it doesn't go close to what I want and I can't see it perfectly. Like if that happens, click, uh, click whatever you need to look at and press the period button or like the on the on the keyboard uh, where the number section is. I'm not sure what it is on Mac though. Sorry guys, but if you press the period, it'll zoom right into what you're working on, and then you have full reign of that area that you're working on. So that's a uh, a little. Oh, that's actually happened to me. Okay. Yeah, that's good. To... Yeah. So let's say so now that the cube is working there, what I can do now is get this little guy and say I want him to move a little, oh, I didn't attach the keyframe. So what I do is I want to start the keyframe here, right click, where is it? Where is it, I? Oh, there it goes. Press I for insert keyframe, and then let's say I want to do a rotation, and then here, when he gets up here, he's gonna like, Look back, like yeah, baby, look at me. Um, and insert rotation, and then, so now, now that animation is separate from the cube, so like, he's gonna turn his head. Like you can start manipulating different things. So like when the car is up in the air, you can have it where maybe. Wait, why is it select? Oh, duh, it's in pose mode. Um, so here you can get this. Let's say I want this to rotate around really fast or something to make it look like a little helicopter. Um, you hit your keyframe. I'm going to hit rotation. And by the time I get to the middle, well, we'll start it right here. Where does he jump off? Right here. Right here. So here. And then you can have it rotate. I don't know, it's a really bad rotation, but I mean, it is what it is. And then rotation, and then so here, it kind of, oh, duh. Yeah, I basically made it go, <laughs> move it all. Whoops, hold on. Can you get him to <laughs> hit, a, uh, uh, hit a 360 spin midair? Oh, you know what, let me try that. Let me see if I can do that before we start winding things down. <laughs> Maybe a flip, baby, actually, instead of a spin. A spin might be kind of weird. Let's see what we can do. Maybe we can use the cube on this. And right here. Let's see. Oh, the camera's moving. Oh, you know what? We'll just manipulate the camera. Oh, because it's cute on it. Actually, that would... What? what Did this work? Let's see what it now. That's kind of cool. That's funny. <laughs> there you go. I pressed the wrong one though, but yeah, you <laughs> technically can. <laughs> but I think I have another cube on it for some reason. I don't know why there's two empties yeah. on this. You can make a second. You can make a second camera with a wide view of the full ramp of him flipping as he goes over it. Yeah. Back. Yeah, yeah, you just... can. You can have two cameras on there. We'll go over cameras again because you you can toggle per camera, um, and there's a way to do that. I forgot what it was but there is a way um so that's there oh this is this actually one. looks really good man okay it's two look. different empties in i don't know where this empties at. maybe something else we can break into for next week no? yeah 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 Dude. but i mean pretty much we we got the animation going the camera's following yeah it looks them. really sweet man this reminds me of like mario party i love it or mario <laughs> part yeah so what I'll do is, like I said, I'm gonna fine tune the car uh, when I get some time and then I'll put it up somewhere so you guys can download the, the little car for you guys and you just put your beast in it and see what you guys can do.